This is the Pursuit of Wellness podcast, and I'm your host, Mari Llewellyn. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Pursuit of Wellness, and welcome back to another Fee and Mari episode. Round of applause. Round of applause. For anyone who is new here, Fiona is my, I hate calling you my assistant because it isn't your role anymore. I know. I really have no idea what my role is. <laughs> like the name of it. <laughs> like we're just not big on roles, yeah. titles here, but she's my executive assistant. She's my partner behind the scenes with the podcast, brand manager, possibly best friend, also potentially related. And we love hopping on the mic together. We love it. And the pal girls love it too. Oh my God. The pal girls are obsessed with Fee. She's the best. We come on here. We have girl chats. We talk about, you know, our goals, our wellness things we're trying. We talk with you guys. We've got some voice messages to respond to today. Yes. You guys have been submitting us voice message questions and, you know, you're looking for advice. So we're going to do that. But first, I think we have a little announcement. Fee doesn't even know what the announcement is. <laughs> I'm like, wait, we didn't say anything. Is this not the episode that you wanted to announce that we're moving? Oh, yeah, the 25th. We're moving to Austin. Mm -hmm. We're we Texas are. girlies. We are. Yeehaw. Anything you want to say? Honestly, I feel like we internally have been talking about it for some time, months. So I think I'm just like so ready. For, I'm, I'm so ready for it to happen. But at the same time, I don't think... I think because we've talked about it so long, I'm just like, okay, like, let's do it. But I think once it actually happens, like our first night we're there, we're just going to be like, holy crap. <laughs> like I know. we literally picked up and moved. And I haven't done that in like seven years. And I was young and naive when I moved to LA. And I was like, I have nothing holding me back. And now I'm like, oh, I have like a dog and a boyfriend and a life. But they're all coming with me. So it's fine. And like me, so I <laughs> literally move every three years of my life. My followers yeah. are like, what are you doing? Like, why do you keep moving? Guys, I've just been this way my whole life. Like I literally, I was thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just a house, I've moved consistently. I was born in London, lived in Switzerland, moved back to England, moved house again, moved to New York, moved house three times in New York, moved to Philadelphia, moved back to New York, moved to Colorado, back to New York, LA, and now I'm going to Texas. Yeah, you've moved a lot. I mean, it's so funny because if someone, I, I could tell someone how I feel about all those different places and where they should live. Yeah. Well, all of them, I feel like you spend at least a year, if not a lot more. Yeah. And I feel like, I feel like a year somewhere kind of gives you a good, a yeah. good gist of it. And you've been in LA almost three years now, I think. But I will say I'm at the point where I want to settle down now. And that's mm -hmm. part of the reason we're moving is because I want to have kids. You want to have kids at some point. We want to live somewhere safe, wholesome, family friendly. There isn't traffic up the butt when you go everywhere. There aren't homeless people throwing bottles in your face. You know? Yeah, yeah. All the things. I love LA. Like it will always have a place in my heart deep down, but I also am very ready for all of that. LA is, listen, LA is stunning. The weather's stunning. It's tough to beat, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it doesn't make up for all the inconveniences. 100%. I agree with that. So 100%. we actually move on the 22nd of January. Fee and I, so we're actually working with Roadway Moving. I've worked with them before. And I've had an amazing experience with them and we're working with them again. And they are picking up all of our stuff on the 22nd, 23rd. They're actually putting me and Fee in the same van, which I love. Truck. Truck. Guys, she keeps calling it a van. And I'm like, both of our homes are not going in a van. You're lucky I'm it's not like calling it- a box truck. You're like a huge truck. <laughs> You're lucky I'm not calling it a lorry, babe. Okay, a lorry. Um. Anyway. In a van. And then I'm driving because Greg and I, okay- I feel like I have to explain the van. Greg and I have had a fantasy of living in a van for the last, I mean, since I met him, we've wanted to do van life, like live in a van, travel the country. So we finally bit the bullet about a month ago and bought a custom van with a kitchen and a bed. We are driving said van from LA. We haven't got it yet. It comes next week. Driving from LA with both dogs all the way to Austin. <laughs> Gonna be so much fun. Oh my god, it's gonna I'm be I'm flying. Yeah. <laughs> Kenny and I are flying with Benny and we'll beat you three days there, but it's fine. I'm gonna go get red, like settled. The truck might even beat Mari and Greg, depending. So like I'll get there and get everything settled for us. But classic fee. You know? The mom. The mom. The whole so, house is gonna be done. Anyway, be that's our announcement. 
if you are an Austin or a Texas girly, let us know. Well, We're looking, friend. <laughs> currently taking applications for friends. We yeah. we want to socialize. Pickleball friends, maybe people that aren't that good at pickleball, but yeah. do take it seriously. Me and Mario are really trying to pick that up. We want to work out with other girls. Yeah. We want to get healthy lunches. We want to go on walks around Ladybird Lake. Probably. We want to go boating. Boating. We want boating. to go on a boat. We are officially lake. boat hoes. <laughs> Boats and hoes. <laughs> Boats and hoes, baby. So that's our announcement. Now, we thought it might be fun. I don't know if you guys have seen the trend of the ins and outs of 2024. So we went ahead and made our own little ins and outs list. We did one on the Pursuit of Wellness Instagram page that everyone loved. Mm -hmm. That was a bit more like podcast focused, but we did our personal ins and outs. Thought we'd run through them really quick. Give you guys a little taste of what we're going for in 2024, what the vibes are. And then we will answer your voice messages. Can't wait. Are you going to do all yours at once or are we swapping back and forth? Let's just do all of our ins. Okay. So I'll do we'll my do ins. Our, okay. And then you do your ins. Amazing. Here are my ins. Reading before bed. 10 pages a night. Blue light glasses at the airport. Why the airport? Because there's so many um, crazy Screen. lights at the airport and on uh, the plane and I want to sleep. Okay. When you said airport specifically, I did not know why, but that makes sense. Screens, yeah, it's a little niche. Yeah. And I like was wearing my orange glasses at the airport last time and people were like, are you good? Kind of granny glasses. But like, I'm at the point, you know what I should edit this to? Not caring about what other people think is in. Ordering meat from ranches and farms. Supporting your local ranch. Also, the meat is really good. Having boundaries with the phone. E.g. no phone at the table or when I'm with my family. Being okay with no plans. Working on this, I'm so... <laughs> You know me. I literally lose my mind. Like if I'm, I can't, I can't sit still. I know. What, well, like this is the reason I keep Friday moving every three years. I'll be like, okay, Mario, see you Monday. Or like, maybe we'll have plans at like Monday morning. She's like, or sorry, like Saturday morning. She's like, what are you doing today? <laughs> I'm like, I You want to hang out with me too. I know, I know. But I'm like, why don't you just like have a morning to yourself? Mario's like, no, let's go to the farmer's market. Let's go do something. Let's work out. Yeah. This is why I keep moving every three years. We're working out this Sunday. I'm so excited. Oh, I can't wait. I like those. I like our little plans on the weekends. I'm just like, I need to be busy. It, I'm probably escaping my own thoughts if we're being honest. Yes. Yeah. I would. Uh, we'll get that. So. We'll um, unpack that yeah. later. <laughs> what are your ends? Okay. Um, a skincare regimen, regime, whatever you want to call it. We actually just had a whole conversation about this prior to recording. Is it regimen or regime? I, I think it's know. regimen now that you're saying okay. it in context. Yeah. A regime sounds like a, an army or something. I but. think a regime is like a, um, what do they call it? Dictatorship. Oh, okay. Not that. Um, a skincare regimen. I have, honestly, I will say, been very blessed my whole life to not really suffer from acne or anything like that. But I am so bad about my skincare and I have very sensitive skin. So I'm really scared of skincare, to be honest. Like I'm even though maybe I wasn't trying to resolve like an issue. Like if I tried, let's say every girl on TikTok's like, I have this new mask, I will try it and break out in hives. Like I just have such sensitive skin. So I was scared to use anything other than like the basic, basic brands. And now I've like gone to a facialist and like they've gotten me, I literally just started a retinol. Mm -hmm. I've never used a retinol in my life, you guys. People are obsessed with retinol right now. I, so, cause I'm just like scared. It sounds so scary. And they're like, you have to use sunscreen or you're gonna burn. But I've started using one at night and like, I feel like even in a couple days, it's really changed the game. So that one. Are you gonna stop sleeping in your makeup? That's my number two. Oh wait, I'll get to that in a sec. My number two. <laughs> We'll get there. Um, buying clothes that fit me now versus trying to keep a full closet of clothes that do not fit me that I just am like, I will fit in one day. I just went to Abercrombie and got these 90s high waist, whatever they're called. I was going to say, those are really cute. I think they're the Curve Love like edition of them. You guys, these are incredible. I went, I tried them on in person. I found my size. I got three pairs and I'm obsessed. And I just feel like I'm finally okay with like, I don't care what size it is. Like I will, whatever size it says on the label, I do not care. Like if they fit me and make me feel good, then like Slay. that's what I want. And that is very in for 2024. Slay. Uh, third, washing my hair twice a week. I don't know if this is gross. Is this an upgrade or a downgrade for you? This is just like a consistent, I just think this is in. Like I would just say, oh, oh, like from what I was doing. Yeah. 
it kind of just depends. I feel like you do not wash your hair, babe. Sometimes I wash it once a week. But like, I think that to me that that's admirable because it means you don't have a lot of oil production. I have to wash my hair every other day. I know. I think, I honestly think two times a week, I mean, everyone's, everyone's hair is different, but like for me, two times a week means like, okay, twice a week, I will like do the whole thing, even like do a mask. Like it's more like a maintenance kind of thing for me. And then- you know, I will definitely go like four or five days with like a hat and then a slick back bun and then braids and then a ponytail. And I probably could have like cut it a little short and washed my hair again. I just get a little lazy. So two times a week. So I'm like looking and feeling my best throughout the whole week. Cute. Um, last two, audiobooks, mm-hmm. game changer. I've also been reading my 10 pages at night in an actual book, but I am obsessed with audiobooks right now. I've been listening to You Can't Hurt Me. You can't. You Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. You Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Mari has talked about this book to me so many times. I've never read it. So I'm listening to the audiobook, which is also like a live podcast version. It is incredible. I'm on my morning walks with my dog and like my mouth is like open half the time because the things he's describing are so crazy. If you're on a journey and you want to get hyped as frick, Mm -hmm. listen to that book. I've listened to it six times on my fitness journey because it just makes you have such a different perspective. Such like every, even even in the last couple of weeks I've been listening to it, everything I've been doing in my life now, I'm like, oh, that's kind of annoying or hard. I'm like, you have no idea, girl. Like this could be, I'm I like, oh, I didn't want to go. It was kind of cold the other day to walk. And I was like, this man is running 150 miles through like Hawaii with like boars chasing him. Like you're good. <laughs> so I'm obsessed with audiobooks. I think it's such a great way to, you know, read a book while you're out on a walk or doing whatever. You know, I think it, it yeah, love them. And then my last thing, my hatch alarm clock that Mari actually got me it was either a birthday or Christmas, something like that. It was a little longer ago, but I, I like, I think I unplugged, something was happening with it, but I finally got it working again and like on my schedule and it is amazing. I've been waking up at 5.30 to go work out at six in the morning and it wakes me up so nice. And like, I just think it's a game changer. So hatch alarm clocks in. Slay. Slay. You're outs. Outs. Over consuming the phone. I think it makes me miserable. Every time I do it, I'm depressed. I deleted Instagram over like leading up to new year's i got it back on january 1st couldn't stand the fucking year recap like is this it's just it's just a flex off at the end of the day like recapping our whole year keep it to yourself like reflect on your year by yourself i I just felt like it was unnecessary and it made me feel pressured to do the recap and i didn't want to so i just deleted the whole app Okay, Love sorry, it. had a little <laughs> Whoa. Someone's been <laughs> holding that in. How feels about the recap. I agree. It's a flex off. Yeah. It's a flex off, and we yeah. all need to get off our phones and in real life. Giving energy to things you can't control. I feel like I'm such a control freak, and both of us, honestly, and I spiral about things that I shouldn't. Like, let it go, babe. It's happening, you know? Yeah. Like You're- spiraling. Thinking about the every every possibility that could happen. In your last solo, you were talking about just like all the things that could go wrong. I think leading up to this move too, I'm up at night just like thinking of every detail and I'll like tell Kenny and he's like, how did you even like get to that? Like I've literally been trying to figure out like how am I going to get my air mattress to Austin before my bed gets there? Yeah, I'm you're like, do really... I fly it? Do I check it? Like, is it going to be $30? <laughs> Kenny's like, you're crazy. You're really <laughs> tripping on the air mattress. Just order a new one and send it to the house. I know, but- Anyway, See, and also there's so much freedom in letting go and letting the universe take it into his hands. Did I say his? I meant it's. It's hands. Hers. Hand. Yeah, period. <laughs> um, even with this baby that I want to have, like I have been really obsessing over having a baby. It's all I think about. Yes. Because I'm excited, but at the same time, it's like the universe has it, you know, and it will happen mm-hmm. when it's supposed to. Um, Oat milk. <laughs> Need I say more? Yeah, enough said. It's starch juice and it's full of uh gross stuff what's that stuff called glyphosate glyphosate Glyphosate. oat milk is out this year and if you can handle dairy and you don't break out drink real milk it's got great um nutrients in there wearing perfume out if anyone's wearing perfume near me i will be cutting you out of my life (laughs) that might not work for me but that's okay you don't smell strong to me ever i've stopped wearing as much good i'll do like a spritz good because I know you're very sensitive to it. So sensitive. Immediate headache, immediately want to pass out. Yeah. Dizzy. Uh, saying yes to everything. I feel like I'm in my season of trying to say no. Because I feel like, especially with work, I'm such a yes person. And I 
spread myself really thin. And I, it, to me in my head, I'm like, if I say no, I'm being weak. But actually, I think I should just be more intentional with the things I want to do. I think actually saying no is like a sh- is a stronger move. It's harder to say no to things than yes. Yeah. And a lot of times. So true. What are your outs? Okay. Hangovers. I have really, oh, I'm doing 75 hard right now. So I'm not drinking at all for 75 days. I'm on day five. Mm. Killing it. Um, But yeah, hangovers. Even when I do, I'm not going to do the sober thing forever as of now. But um, yeah, I think just decreasing my alcohol. Like it's still fun to go out and have a glass of wine with your friends. But like, do you need to have four? No. You're doing dry Jan, right? Yeah, with along with 75 hard. Okay. Yeah. 75 hard, you can't drink? At all. No. Isn't Alex Earl doing... 30 hard perhaps but is she not drinking perhaps mm. i don't know anyway all these girls are doing like 50 soft ish i'm like okay Just, <laughs> that's normal life no like what are you doing not on 50 soft ish i don't know every to each their own if you are doing something to better yourself go for it um here we go sleeping and makeup i did this on new year's mari gets so angry when i do this i, I get, but the reason i get angry is because if i did that i know i would have a cystic breakout but fee has perfect skin like but everyone has their thing we always talk about this like for me my skin is so bad i've been through so many levels yeah. with it and yours is just like glossy every day so I can understand why you sleep in your makeup because nothing happens, but like it's crusty dusty. We had this whole conversation about it. I was like, how does my skin know I'm asleep? Like, how does it know that I'm awake versus sleep? And Mari was like, that's that's not how that The math isn't today. mathing. But to be so honest, everyone's gonna be like, you're so vapid. I got home from being out. My I put makeup on four hours before and I looked really good. And I was just like, I look pretty. I'd rather go to bed looking gorgeous. Ugh. And wake up, maybe still kind of like, gorgeous. Don't get me wrong, I hate taking my makeup know, off, yeah. but like you gotta I think do I it. I just got home. Well, I was literally in bed by twelve fifteen, and we were out at twelve oh one for the clock. So that's it's because I didn't take my makeup off. I got right into bed. Um, okay, scrolling at night. Enough said. Like staring at your phone at ten thirty when you should be sleeping. Stop it. I get notifications from my TikTok like, "Hey, it's time to go to bed," and I'm like, "Wow, have you ever gotten one of those from TikTok?" Oh yeah. No, I haven't. Oh, I have quite a few times. If you were scrolling for like a long time, which I feel like I'll just do without even knowing, it'll be like, "It's time to go to bed." Yeah, it tells you. I'm shocked. I feel like they'd want to keep you in that. I, I must be on it for a very long time. <laughs> Fiona. Okay, fourth, being dehydrated. I. I'm pretty bad about drinking my water. Can I take a sip? Yeah, take a sip. Take a fat sip. I, being dehydrated is, oh, out. I guess being dehydrated is, no, out, out. Yeah, oh my God. Whoa. <laughs> I'm like being dehydrated. <laughs> being dehydrated is out. And I, to be honest, struggle with just drinking water. Like I have plenty of, Mari's like, oh, I just love a big cup of water. Not, not it for me. I have to put something in it. So whether it's greens Specifically strawberry kiwi. That is my go-to right now. Just restocked, guys. It sold out because it is legit the best, in my opinion, right now. Oh, it has been like the best seller now. I know. It's doing well. It's unreal. All the greens flavors are amazing. Strawberry kiwi is a game changer. So whether it's greens, even like lemon in Mm -hmm. your water, like just something to spice it up really helps me with my water consumption. So we don't want to be dehydrated in 2024. And my last thing, this is kind of out of pocket, matching sets. (gasps) Yeah. I'm going to be the first to say it. I was a matching set girly for the last like two years. I really was. And I, I don't know. I've just recently not been doing that. It sounds maybe matching sets slash over consumption of things I don't need. Mm. I think I'll be at the gym or a class and I see a girl in a matching set. And it just is so like pleasing to the eye. But I, I agree I with you. It. I think matching sets are out. Yeah, like I just feel like that was really in for a while, the last two years, I would say. Like matching workout sets specifically, yeah. like the matching bra and bottom, whatever. I have been mixing and matching and I've been loving it. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Except navy and black. Except navy and black. We talked about that. Yes, that does not go. They're too close. They're too close. Navy if you're wearing it, I'm work. so sorry, but take yeah, it off. It doesn't match. Okay. Great. Well, I love our ins and outs. I hope you guys like them too. With that said, guys, let's hop into some voice messages. We have not listened to these. This is the first time we're hearing them. Hopefully none of them are outrageously inappropriate. I kind of hope so. I know. I love a little one. You guys suck. Oh, thanks, babe. I hate this show. <laughs> I hate this freaking show. Hey, Mari. Okay. And Fee. And Fee. 
She's the worst. She makes it the worst. <laughs> Get her off the mic. <laughs> okay. I got this girl on the mic. <laughs> Hi, Mari and the POW team. My name is Melissa, and I just wanted to hear more about your fertility journey and Greg's fertility journey. I know you had mentioned that Greg ices and red lights his, you know, man area. And I thought it was cool that you opened up about that kind of stuff. Like, no matter how, like, raunchy or crazy anything may sound like, I liked that you guys opened up about that. So any other things that you and your husband do, any tips and tricks, that'd be great. Thank you. Aw, thank you, Melissa. Well, (sighs) how do you tell her you're going to go here? (laughs) Well, I I was a bit off the cuff in that episode. If you guys are wondering where that information comes from, it's from mine and Fee's Christmas episode. So go listen to that. I was ovulating in New York. We did have sex every single day. Like machine vibes. Uh, by the end, we were both like, ugh. And I was like, I know, baby, we just have to. <laughs> like, it's, it is fun at first. But by the time we were, like we had to fly back to LA six hours. We were tired. We were crusty. And I was like, we have to have sex. And he was like, come on. I was like, I know, soz. <laughs> so... Just a lot of sex and timing it perfectly with your ovulation, um, using the aura ring, using natural cycles, peeing on the LH strip tests or dipping them in your pee, whatever, making sure I'm ovulating. I've been confused since then because there's a lot of things popping up symptom wise to where I'm not sure if I'm pregnant or if I'm just getting my period because freaking fee has the strongest hormones and we both came back from the holidays and she got her period and now I think she gave me my period because she just Sorry. sways the whole room from her Sorry. we're together so much that's a real thing like that happens I think it we'll see I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put anything out there but I know we'll see. but anyway yeah red light icing the balls making sure you're not in like hot tubs mm-hmm. um things of that nature good tips let's listen to this one Hi, Mari. I first and foremost want to say thank you so much for all of the content that you put on this podcast. I have been listening since day one and I absolutely love it. So thank you. Um, My question is actually about your acne transformation because I am an acne prone girly myself trying to heal it. Um, So I was wondering if you had experienced purging while you were going through your journey. Um, And I only ask really because I am on week nine or 10 of following a lot of the recommendations and protocols that you and Emily, your um, integrative health practitioner had talked about over your podcast and on her Instagram. And I'm still just purging so bad after, you know, almost nine weeks. So I was just wondering if this had happened to you as well. And any advice you might have to share on it would be amazing. So thank you. Oh, what a cutie. 100% I purged. And what Emily explained to me was that when you kill off, like the things you're killing off in your body, whether it be candida, parasites, mold, it doesn't want to be killed off and it can result in purging. I'm not sure the exact science behind that, but while it's like you're attacking those toxins, it comes out of your face, you know? So I definitely purged and I still purge after facials and things like that because when you do chemical peels, it brings everything to the surface. I know it's hard and those purging periods suck, but it's necessary to get to the other side. I remember being with you when you were going through that, like more recently. And I remember you were just like, it feels like forever. You were like, is it ever going to get better? And then it it did. I know. But it just took time. I remember I kept telling you like time and you were like, I'm tired. I'm (laughs) tired of this grandpa. (laughs) Hi guys. I love you both so much. Um, I have so many questions and now I'm realizing I only have 60 seconds. Okay. I think my first question that I want to know both your opinions on is how do you know which information you should really be listening to or really consuming? Um, like your podcast is doing such a great job of giving us different perspectives and different experts, but still at the end of the day, there's people on your podcast that say, eat oats, don't eat oats, be plant-based, only eat meat, don't eat vegetables. Like, how do you know how do you know what's right? How do you know what to listen to? Everyone thinks they're an expert too right now. So I feel like that's a part of the problem. Um, When there's just so much information at our fingertips, how do we know 
what we should be listening to. How do we know what is right? And I appreciate your podcast for helping try to kind of sort through that. And I love you guys. Thanks. Bye. Oh, okay. I run into this a lot. I mean, especially being the host of this show. I'm confused sometimes. I'm like, you, you know, we had Simon Hill on recently and he brought a whole new slew of information that contradicted a lot of what how I live my life. And it was confusing for me. And I think the way that I come back to center is, okay, how do I feel eating this or that? How do I feel implementing that in my routine? And then also having the blood work to back it up. Because if I have perfect blood work and I feel amazing, I'm gonna stick with what I'm doing. I'm open to learning and potentially improving things here and there for sure. Yeah. But like, let's say something is off in my blood work and someone says, hey, maybe it's because of this, try this, then I'll do it. But like, also everyone is so different. That's the thing. Yeah. Like you kind of need to just take the information in and be like, okay, does that really match up with my lifestyle and what I believe in? Yeah. And like she said, like all the guests, they come on, like they may feel like they're experts in something because that's what they have been doing and what works for them specifically. And anyone that's experiencing like the positive benefits of a certain way to eat or a certain whatever way to exercise, whatever it is, they want to spread that information and share it with people because it worked for them. You know what I mean? And it could work for you, but it could not. But I think the importance of having all the different kinds of people on and sharing their different perspectives and what they believe in all just helps everyone, including myself as a listener, determine what's best for them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like having someone on that's a carnivore diet, maybe I don't feel like that necessarily is exactly what I want to do for myself, but I, you bet like I have eaten way more protein lately than I was because I took that bit of information. Like I think you can kind of pick and choose what you take from each episode and from each person. Very yeah. well said. Yeah. I agree. Hi, Mari. Hi, Fee. This question is for Mari. Uh, my name is Chelsea, and I am also looking to be a 2024 mama to be. My question is, how are you able to stop smoking the good stuff? Um, I know it's really impactful for fertility, and our goal this year is to conceive. So I will have to lay off of the weed, and I'm wanting to know what you're doing to cope and relax. I think more people use weed than we realize, honestly. Oh, yeah. Well, it's so normal, especially like where we are in California. It's so normal. Yeah. And for context, like for people wondering why people are asking me that question, I used to smoke regularly at night to relax. Um, and I still think it's really fun. However, I've listened to Andrew Huberman talk about the statistics with fertility and smoking, and I just don't think it's worth it. It is a harder route, but I think learning to self-soothe with meditation, sauna, grounding, a nighttime regimen regime is crucial so I've been tapping into that and just trying to figure it out on my own the reading really helps reading makes me really sleepy and tired um and putting the phone away so yeah unfortunately it's a little bit more challenging but I think in this season temporarily like it's just not worth it I feel like you and Greg both pretty drastically just like kind of stop. Yeah. Like I remember when I first started working with you, you guys, <laughs> guys, I'd come into work and there were joints everywhere. And I was <laughs> shocked. I was like, these like yoked fitness people smoke weed. Like I don't, I don't even really, I didn't even indulge like that. And I was just like, that's crazy. But uh, I think you guys really just kind of like stop. Yeah. We also would eat too much. We would go crazy on the food. Munchies. Hey, Mari, I just actually messaged you. would be so surprised that what you put out there, um, how it can change somebody's life every day. Thanks. Oh, that's lovely. That was a sweet little message. That was. Hold on, I want to grab a couple more, guys. This is a good one for Fee. Because it has dating in it. Hi, Mari. Hi, Fee. I love listening to you girls. I'm so happy to leave a voice message. Um... I, my question is, um, how do you deal with um, weight insecurity during dating? So I um, have recently been struggling with my hormones, um, especially after getting COVID. They're just a little out of whack and working on getting them back in under control. And I gained weight with all of that, like with the hormone imbalances. And um, just trying to work on balancing my hormones, getting back to a weight that I feel more confident in. So 
I'm single and dating, but I just feel a bit insecure about the way I look now or my weight now. And I know the guy doesn't really care, but any confident tips that you girls have would be. Oh, I love it. Yeah, that was a great message. Do you want to start? You want me to start? You go ahead. So I have been there. I totally get where you're coming from. Um, I think the first five years after I moved to LA, I was single. And I think that was for a lot of reasons. But one big reason, I think I was very insecure. I think I came to LA and it made me even more insecure. Um, and add that to just like not feeling good about myself or, you know, the way my weight maybe or the way I looked. I... I think even without realizing it, I was not putting myself out there or I want to say even like putting myself out there for the right kind of person. I think I was, if anything, going for the wrong type of person or a person that did not treat me the way I should be treated because I was valuing myself lower because I felt bad about myself in a way. So I totally understand where you're coming from. It's, it's tough, but you know, as long as you are working on yourself, like that's what matters the most. And yeah, like I get you want to feel good about yourself. And like, I think as long as you keep promises to yourself and work on those things, like that is a huge way to feel confident, even if maybe the way you're looking in that moment is not what you want to look like. But also, and I know you said like, you know, some guys don't care, which is very true. But like the person you want to ultimately be with should not want to be with you because you're 20 pounds lighter than you are right now or something like that. Like, I've always felt that way. And you know, I hope whoever I end up with long term that like they love me at any way. And yes, I want to take care of myself and like look the best for me and for my partner always. But like, I think like they should love you no matter what. Like they should love you for being the person. I feel like I've actually talked to Mari a little bit about this, like on your journey. Yeah. With that with Greg. So true. So true. Greg has seen me at my best, at my worst, my lowest moments, my best moments when I've had a six pack, when I've been 60 pounds overweight. And, um, he's been my best friend through it all. And I think actually it makes you so much stronger to meet someone when you're maybe not your best and then grow with them. I think there's a lot of value in that too, but I feel like yeah. you summed that up really nicely. That, that was a great see, question. I could pull one more. Hi, Mari. I am so freaking excited to be doing this right now. I'm almost a little nervous, um, but I'm currently walking on the treadmill. Just finished your podcast. Um, and just have become obsessed with you guys. So, and Hyphy, can't forget about you either. Um, my question is, I feel like you have been so humble throughout all of your success over the last couple of years. Um, and obviously compensation comes with that. What is your perspective of this major life change and, and what change do you want to make on others that surround you and your business? cute i think she means like in terms of financial success right yeah hmm. definitely a big change i mean just for some perspective when i got into social media i was uh making minimum wage at the front desk of orange theory and i did not grow up in a wealthy family i grew up around wealthy people and it took me a long time to realize actually that they were wealthy. Like I knew they had huge houses with indoor pools, but I was like, I don't know, maybe they just were born that way. But I like definitely did not grow up that way. And wealth was never something that was um, encouraged in my house. You and I have spoken about this, but actually I think there's a little bit of a culture. My dad is from Wales and grew up in a working class family. Um, he actually was born into government housing. And a lot of my... Welsh family were miners, um, working class. And there's almost this uh, perception of the wealthy that it's not a good thing. Like you kind of make fun of people with money and, and it's not like we relate to them at all. It's like, oh, we'll never be like that. That's sort of like elitist. Like they don't want to be like that. Like you no. shouldn't be flashy and talk about money. Exactly. And, yeah. Like I kind of had a negative relationship actually with wealth growing up. So yeah to start my business and kind of go into it because I loved it and because I wanted to like expand this community. Money was never the goal. Greg is much more financially literate than me and has a healthy relationship with money and everything I've learned about finances has kind of been through him and his family. Still not really my thing. I'm not a numbers person. But having wealth has allowed me 
to create a life where I have a lot of freedom. So for example, I if I want my dad to visit me, I can buy him business class tickets and make sure he's comfortable and make sure he's able to come stay in LA and have a great experience. Or um, we went to Switzerland recently and I was able to support a family member going because it can be a very expensive trip. Or um, some of the cool vacations we take as a friend group and Greg and I are able to get that for everyone and be, I don't know, I don't know. I think it's allowed me to actually be a better version of myself because I've always been someone who enjoys sharing experiences and I like being generous. Um, and I feel like it's allowed me to do that and also do things like horseback ride and have that kind of freedom and also think about my future child. But with that said, I've kind of had a little bit of an identity crisis with it because as I said, I never grew up respecting it. I wouldn't say I'm someone who's like loud and proud about it. If anything, if, if it's me, if it's brought up to me, I feel like a little uncomfortable and like a yeah. little embarrassed and I try to tone it down. Yeah. Which I probably shouldn't do. Like I probably should be a bit more confident about it, but yeah. I just, some it, it doesn't match my, my personality, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I think it's the personality, it's the upbringing. It's also like it happened fairly quickly. Yeah. Like as an outsider looking in, even from when I started working with you, it like you guys have become very, very successful in a very short period of time. Something that a lot of people probably do, maybe don't, don't ever do in their lifetime or if they do it over a lifetime, you know what I mean? So yeah. I think the the rapid pace of it happening, I think could definitely be in that, but. I think it also is a bit isolating. I think people would yeah. be surprised how it, you have a very different life, especially at this age. I have a very different reality to a lot of people my age. And that sounds like it would be a good thing. And I, we've made it a good thing because we have such great people we're around and we're yeah. able to kind of like experience this life with them. But at the same time, you can't relate to a lot of other people and it is quite isolating. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also, you know how they say more money, more problems? Yeah. It's kind of true. Yeah. Your yeah. problems are bigger and more yeah. stressful yeah. and life was kind of simpler before. Yeah. I think, I don't know. I, money definitely doesn't fix everything. I can tell you that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I feel like any celebrity will tell you that. Like any, like you could have all the money in the world and like you still will be dealing with a lot of problems. Which not to say... Ha being able to have a lot of money is not amazing. Like Mari, just as an outsider looking in, is like very grateful and humble about it. And like as a friend of hers and, you know, someone that obviously works with her, like her and Greg take very good care of everyone that they work with. And like I've always, well, I haven't always experienced that in the past with other positions or whatever. And I think you guys do a great job at that. So I just feel like what's the point otherwise? Like what's the yeah. point of being successful if you can't share it with the people you love, you know? I think I love that you guys have that mentality. I think a lot of people are like, I did all this for myself and like, I'm keeping it. Like, you Miserable. Know, you know, it's, it's, yeah. Anyway, I hope that answered <laughs> the question. We have a bunch more voice messages, but I feel like we should save them for another day. Um, mm -hmm. But thank you guys so much for submitting. If you want to submit a voice message, the link is in the show notes. We'll also post it again on Instagram. Fee, thank you so much for joining us today. Of course. It's also always linked in the podcast page uh, links, like in the bio. Perfect. Yep. So Amazing. There. But yeah, so much fun. Always we have show. a really great 2024 in store. I know we keep saying it, but I hope you guys are enjoying the in-app video, the full YouTube videos, amazing guests on the way potentially some Texas guests. Yes, we have a lot. Oh, you guys, it's been crazy over here. Woo! But I'm so excited for the show and for Mari and for you guys to hear who we have coming up in the next couple months. And yeah, 2024. Reminder to subscribe, follow, leave a review. Helps us grow the show. Helps us grow this lovely community. We love you guys so much. See ya. Bye. Thanks for joining us on the Pursuit of Wellness podcast. To support this show, please rate and review and share with your loved ones. If you want to be reminded of new episodes, click the subscribe button on your preferred podcast or video player. You can sign up for my newsletter to receive my favorites at marilewellen.com. It will be linked in the show notes. This is a Wellness Out Loud production produced by Drake Peterson, Fiona Attics, and Kelly Kyle. This show is edited by Mike Fry and our video is recorded by Luis Vargas. You can also watch the full video of each episode on our YouTube channel at Mari Fitness. Love you, pal girls and pal boys. See you next time.
The content of this show is for educational and informational purposes only. It is not a substitute for individual medical and mental health advice and does not constitute a provider-patient relationship. As always, talk to your doctor or health team.